No movie genre loves a sequel quite like horror. Chances are the vast majority of successful horror movies will end up with a sequel at one point, or more likely 12 of them. Though with this expectation for sequelization comes the reasonable belief that the sequels will never fully one-up the original. And while that is usually the case, it's not always the case. So with that in mind, I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 horror movie sequels massively better than the original. Number 10, Wrong Turn 2, Dead End. 2003's a backwards horror flick, Wrong Turn, certainly isn't a bad film, yet aside from a few nasty kills, it does fail to distinguish itself much, due to a relatively cliched script and forgettable array of central characters. Expectations were lower then for the straight-to-video sequel, Wrong Turn 2 Dead End, which actually benefited tremendously from ditching the original self-serious tone for an altogether sillier, campier touch. Directed with energy and charm by Joe Lynch in his filmmaking debut, Wrong Turn 2 manages to not only outdo its predecessor on the gore front, but also serves up some worthwhile satire of reality TV alongside a number of memorable characters, best of all being Henry Rollins' ex-Marine, Dale Murphy. For a film that almost everybody expected to be a cynical cash-in on a moderately successful original, it was truly shocking that Wrong Turn 2 proved to be so much more fun than what came before. Its success on home video, however, did lead to a glut of four increasingly terrible sequels before the franchise was finally given a not bad reboot last year. Number 9, Friday the 13th Part 6, Jason Lives. Now, there's no denying the iconic appeal of the original Friday the 13th. For all of its rough edges and uninspired filmmaking, the big moments hit hard, ensuring that audiences were game for a whole host of sequels. Yet, who could have ever anticipated that the series would peak in its sixth entry? Well, following on from a woefully disappointing fifth film, which misguidedly attempted to move the series away from Jason, Friday the 13th Part 6 Jason Lives brought him back with a kooky ferocity. Now, part of the job is in how this movie thoroughly understands the ridiculousness of the series, yet without undermining Jason as a terrifying physical threat. And what kind of ridiculousness are we talking about here, I hear you ask? Well, this is a movie that opens with a parody of the James Bond gun barrel sequence and ends with a song written by Alice Cooper, which kinda just says it all. It's also by far the most stylish and well-made Friday movie, which, while admittedly a relatively low bar, helps put this head and shoulders above every other film in the series. Number 8, The Purge Anarchy. The original The Purge's John Carpenter-esque premise was great, but by confining a night of government-sanctioned carnage to a single house, presumably for budgetary reasons, the execution just couldn't quite do it justice. However, after making $90 million against a mere $3 million price tag, Blumhouse gave the sequel The Purge Anarchy a beefy $11 million budget, allowing it to basically be the movie that the first one should have been all along. And in turn, the second Purge quite sensibly moved moves the action away from its predecessor's single location setup to a more sprawling night of mayhem across Los Angeles. Led by Frank Grillo, who was perfectly cast as the Punisher-esque protagonist Leo Barnes, this is a superior sequel in basically every way. The characters, drama, action, and visuals all effortlessly trump the original's relatively sleepy home invasion flick. Sure, its politics are heavy-handed and clumsy at the best of times, but at least in this instance it felt like returning filmmaker James DeMonaco was basically given free reign to do whatever the hell he wanted, whereas the first Purge felt like a major creative compromise. Number 7, The Devil's Rejects. Rob Zombie's directorial debut, House of 1000 Corpses, is a rough and ready horror that, while cementing Zombie's penchant for deeply unpleasant imagery and graphic violence, doesn't really offer a whole lot else worth clinging to, apart from, well, maybe Sid Haig's Captain Spaulding, of course. But Zombie's sequel, The Devil's Rejects, has far more drive and ambition as a blood-soaked road movie western in which the murderous Firefly family now become the protagonists. The Devil's Rejects will make you want to take a long, hot shower afterwards, but Zombie seems to have a far greater handle on both his characters and the film's style this time around. The obnoxious editing choices of House of a Thousand Corpses are switched out for stylistic ticks that perfectly homage the exploitation era that the film is so obviously indebted to. Plus, it ends with one of cinema's finest invocations of Leonard Skinner's Freebird, which alone puts it far above the original. Number 6, Annabelle Comes Home. 
Now look, admittedly, I do have a soft spot for 2014's Annabelle, but even I, as a fan, concede that it had plenty of flaws, and that the bar was pretty low for the sequels, both of which jumped over it massively in terms of quality. Initially, 2017's prequel Annabelle Creation proved that the franchise had actual promise, and threequel Annabelle Comes Home straight up confirmed it. Though the third Annabelle film certainly isn't incredible, it is a market improvement over the original, delivering a greater balance of well-crafted funhouse scares and meaningful character development. Annabelle Comes Home feels like far more of an actual movie than the original, which did whiff of the more cynical sort of franchise cash-in for a quick, easy book. Number 5. Gremlins 2 The New Batch a possibly controversial choice here, so let's just get one thing out of the way first. The original Gremlins is a great movie in its own right. Joe Dante's darkly comedic creature feature is an unwieldy fusion of family-friendly sci-fi and surprisingly violent horror. Yet Gremlins 2, the new batch, is so jaw-droppingly insane as to make the original Gremlins seem positively pedestrian by comparison. Now, a legend states that Dante only agreed to return for the scene Equal if he was given full creative control, which combined with a budget triple that of the first movie, allowed him to deliver one of the most brilliantly daring sequels in cinema history. Gremlins 2 is a flabbergastingly tireless satire of both the original Gremlins and Hollywood's fascination with sequels in general, upping the ante so much to a comically cartoonish level. Yet this isn't just some passive-aggressive crusade by the filmmaker, it's also a terrifically entertaining piece of work that's as playfully satirical and meta as it is, often genuinely horrifying. Dante threw everything at the wall that his massive budget would allow, and courtesy of some first-rate puppetry work, the vast majority of it does indeed stick. Number 4. VHS 94 2012's horror anthology VHS kickstarted an ongoing franchise of four sequels to date, with a fifth on the way. No matter that the original movie was actually a relatively hit and miss affair. As is so often the problem with anthologies, the original VHS's collection of shorts ranged from pretty good to completely forgettable. Consequently, though the format definitely offered up plenty of promise, many were left wishing for a greater degree of quality control. And thankfully, immediately that happened, with VHS 2 raising the bar considerably and delivering one of the finest found footage movies of its generation. Unfortunately though, it couldn't remain consistent and the quality dipped yet again with third movie VHS Viral, which is the absolute dirt worst of this series. All was not lost though, as after a few years off, VHS 94 came back with a bang and delivered the most consistently entertaining, conceptually interesting and well thought out film of the whole franchise. Gory, silly and a whole load of fun, VHS 94 was a true joy to watch, and though the recently released VHS 99 didn't quite hit the same highs, the series nevertheless seems to be back on firmer footing than ever before. And that is incredibly rare, I mean how many four films in horror series do you know that end up being the best? Number 3. When a Stranger Calls Back 1979's When a Stranger Calls earns a lot of goodwill because of how exquisitely crafted its opening 20 minutes are. Yet the rest of the movie, and especially that flabby middle hour, categorically struggles to live up to such a stellar first act, ultimately feeling packed with filler just 97 minutes in length. Bizarrely, despite the film's massive box office success, a sequel wasn't actually produced until 14 years later, and even more oddly, ended up being released direct to cable TV. Still, 1993's A Stranger Calls Back brought Carol Kane and Charles Dunning back into the fold, along with the original writer-director Fred Walton, for a belated sequel that most unexpectedly outdid what came before. Though it suffers from the same structural issues, the first and third acts are definitely the strongest, it doesn't feel nearly as padded as the original, while weaving a more consistently unsettling story. Impressively, Walton crafts an opening sequence that at least matches, if not best, the first film as well, while segueing into an exploration of trauma that's allowed it to age shockingly well over the last three decades. If you, quite understandably, dismissed When a Stranger Calls Back as a lazy belated cash-in, it definitely is worth giving a second look. Number 2. Terrifier 2 
Terrifier made a bit of a splash in 2016, but most agreed that despite having a creepy antagonist in Art the Clown, the frequently atrocious dialogue and acting made it a bit of a chore to sit through, even at just 84 minutes in length. But the recently released Terrifier 2 marked a major glow up in every single way. For starters, the gore is even more elaborate and insane courtesy of a beefed up budget, and in new lead Sienna Shaw, the filmmakers found a genuinely compelling protagonist. Though certainly still rough around the edges in places and far too long at 138 minutes, Terrifier 2 ups the ante in basically every way that a horror sequel can, while also putting considerably more effort into the writing. With Terrifier 2 becoming a surprise box office smash relative to its budget, it'll be interesting to see if the inevitable threequel keeps up the trend. Number 1. The Conjuring 2 and another possibly controversial pick here. James Wan's The Conjuring was a perfect example of a well-crafted studio horror that managed to deliver the balmy thrills and jump scares mainstream audiences expect, while also being technically impressive, well-acted, and filled with likeable characters. It didn't reinvent the wheel, but it was rock solid. But for The Conjuring 2, James Wan took his $40 million budget, doubled that of the original, and created one of the most genuinely epic, supersized horror horror sequels ever. The 134 minute Conjuring 2 compellingly shifts the setting to London, ensuring the film has a totally different look to its predecessor, all the while delivering a more heightened and elaborate bevy of thrills. This sequel boasts some of the most ingeniously well thought out set pieces in any horror film produced by a major studio that decade, with the nun sequence of course being an all timer, while daring to devote considerable amounts of time to its central characters, especially my mum and dad, Ed in Lorraine Warren. The Conjuring 2 very easily could have just been more of the same, but one laudably dared to go further and the results were absolute cinematic dynamite. He also gave us Patrick Wilson playing the guitar, which 10 out of 10 right there to be honest. So, that's our list. I wonder what you guys think about these sequels down in the comments below. Do you agree that they outdid their predecessors? And which sequels would you have had on here instead? Let me know, and while you're down there, could you please give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to What Culture Horror for more lists like this on the regular. Even if you don't, though, I've been Josh. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.